Amen. We will. Oh, my goodness. Lord have mercy. You know, I said to I, I said to my husband, I said, Jimmy, I put a Facebook post on this morning and I started with it. I think I have a problem. I said, <laughs> I'll get people's ears up because I never have a problem. I said, <laughs> I love the whole world, but my arms aren't big enough to give the whole world a hug. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Love the oh, hell out of them. You know, we've been called to love the hell out of people. Absolutely. I like Vivian's response to you saying that our father's arms are plenty big. <laughs> Amen. Glory. I haven't had a chance to see. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? I'm Amen. excited. I am so excited. <laughs> Loving my life. Guys, how about when I speak up? Do I cut out? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Microphone. We need to get you a a, a professional microphone. I bought a microphone. Oh. Well, it still can't handle you. Unbelievable. <laughs> Supernatural one. <laughs> you need to get a golden mic. I'm that telling. means you've got the gain turned up too high, Beulah. The gain's turned up too high. Okay, tell me how to do it, my brother. I'm not sitting at my computer, so I can't right now. Oh, yes, okay. Maybe what what your... is it called? The gain? What's the yeah. volume? Yes, ma'am. Or the gain, yeah. You can okay. turn something down a little bit so it'll... It's, it's, prob it's probably in your... Uh, microphone settings not in the zoom settings correct okay well i'm you guys just continue am i still with you yes <laughs> okay. you're still with us yeah I just, just up here in the little oh corner. yeah there you go i'm going to my logitech that's where it must be okay good just good to see you there art and your lovely wife and matt there as well yeah. you as well <laughs> john <laughs> Stephanie. It's good always morning. good to see you, John. Yes. Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, people. Hi, Hi. Stephanie. Hi. Yeah. yeah. How are you guys? All right, Cheryl. We're well, thanks. We're dry. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's good. <laughs> I, I thought you guys had it's wet out. It's uh, but I think we're okay so far. You yeah. know, thank you for praying for us here. Yeah. Is yeah. it hurricanes? Yeah. Debbie, Hurricane Debbie is passing. Oh. Through. Oh. And, and this wow. is like we said. This is in our first rodeo. We've seen several. <laughs> through, so. Wow. We're supposed to get the rain on Friday. Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Same thing. I call her. I call her Little Debbie. Little Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one has had a lot of moisture in it, and it's been slow. Yes. I think is what it's yes. really slow. Yeah, it sucked all the moisture out of the Gulf where I'm at, so we're having, it's really hot, but there's no humidity. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, it's very good. Nice. Oh. Wow, we're having earthquakes here. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah so our power's out and wow. it's supposed to be like 106 today and oh, <laughs> oh god really? has that happened before with the earth <laughs> with the power not not to us in particular um it happened just after nine o'clock last night and we felt it like it was the strongest and longest Ooh. we've ever felt Mm. And um, it's kind of fun. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I, I was like, oh, fun. wait, are we supposed to get in a doorway or something like that? But we were just like, whoo. Like, <laughs> you don't then, have an earthquake plan in place? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, nope, nope. <laughs> but and then a few hours later, uh, our son came in. He's like, there was just an explosion. And I saw a big flash of light. And so like a, a transformer right mm -hmm. behind our neighbors across the street, right behind their house, it had blown. And the pole is, 
you know, completely broken off at the bottom, kind of hanging by the lines. Mm. Ooh, that'll do um, it. That'll do yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> That's so, not right. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't know. Did you get so, your microphone fixed, uh, Beulah? I can't do it while I'm hooked up to you. I'll have to do it when I'm not hooked up. Okay. So I just tried to keep the volume down. Right. Uh huh. <laughs> well, we believe in miracles. Yeah. <laughs> you, you could actually sit back. Maybe if you if you uh lean, don't lean forward, it's hard not to. I know, but um, yeah, I'll that'll try. Help, that'll help too. Lay hands on her, Jimmy. We'll get a yeah. miracle. <laughs> you know, or you can I, you can have Jimmy you can have Jimmy speak for you. <laughs> I got it under control now. <laughs> the volume. <laughs> I will Is that the volume you. control. Okay. I tell you something. I am just. I'm so excited. I I said to Jan yesterday. I said, Jan, I'm so free. I said, Could you believe? I, I in my video I said you know I was on my bike and I needed to go to the bathroom so bad and I had to do my 10 miles real quick and I ran home and I'm sitting on the toilet <laughs> my. you know what it's yeah. okay because you know what I don't have any shame is there anybody here that doesn't sit on the toilet <laughs> I sit on it frequently <laughs> I call it the throne <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Years ago, when I was a legalist, I would never talk to the Lord on the toilet. Because I could not sit on the toilet. No. You know, we are butt naked before Him. All yeah. things are open to Him. Amen. And, but you know what? It's so wonderful to be able to be you. I love being me. I'm a peculiar person. That's true. We all are. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you. This morning, I was uh, I was reading in Job. I went to to Job because you know people people teach from Job like Job know knew what he was talking about. You know. The good Lord giveth and the good Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's quoted at funerals today. It's not so much. You want to stand up and say, You're breaking it. You're breaking up. <laughs> the good Lord did not take away. The Lord, good Lord gives and he gives and he gives. He's not giving. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. The only so, thing he takes away is our shame and our yeah. guilt and our darkness and our blindness. Yeah. Absolutely. He didn't give it Same to us. He, didn't <laughs> give it. he just takes it away. <laughs> you know, Elio, Elio was one of those guys, and he was the youngest, you know, of the comforters. And he said, it says in verse 6 of 32, Elio, son of Berichel the Buzite answered and said, I am young and ye are very old. Wherefore I was afraid and dares not show you my opinion. And you know, right next to that, I have uh, 1 Timothy 4 12. And I believe it says, Let no man despise you. Okay, mm -hmm. and he was young, but he had a whole lot more going on than those old geezers. Amen. <laughs> And he says, in verse 18, he says, um, now I'll start at 17. I said, I will answer also my part. I also will show my opinion, for I am full of a matter. And that word matter is words. I'm full of it. The spirit within okay. me constrains me. Behold, my belly is a wine as wine which hath no vent, it no is vent. ready to burst like new bottles. And you know, uh, there was, a, I think it was John Knox, the uh, Scottish minister. It was one of, oh, no, or was it Billy Bray? It might have been Billy Bray, but they threatened him. He was always telling everybody about Jesus. And uh, 
they they threatened him. They were going to put him in a wine vat and and roll him down a mountain. And I got him confused with Elihu. And I said one time preaching, I'm like a wine vat with no bunghole. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But you know, if it was a, you know, I mean, we have got to be new wineskins to this new wine. Because I'm telling you something. Sometimes I feel like I'm going to bust. Amen. And you know, I was listening to a message this morning and it just blessed my son. And I'm like, right here, Jimmy, this one statement, I could sit here all day and just feast on this glorious thought. And it, he said, if God is reinforcing structure, it is an announcement that he's coming with a higher dimension of love. If you find yourself where your structure is being reinforced, maybe your integrity is even being tested. Mm -hmm. It's not like God. You see, you've got to see everything from God's perspective. And the reason I ended up in Job is I remember hearing years ago, Job saying, oh, he's just, he's just examining me with a fine tooth comb. He's just looking for something. Mm -hmm. That is a real mean perspective. Mm -hmm. God. Yeah, that's not true. And, you know, when I see that fine tooth comb, I always think we had a fine tooth comb in our house in England and it was double sided. And I don't know if you have them over it, but it's, it's fine on both. Yeah, ends. You know what they used for to get the nits out. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we'd come home scratching and mother would say, Oh, come here. Let me look. I think you got nits. And sure enough, she would pour oil on our head and take that fine tooth comb and you. get those nits out. Yeah. But that was Job's perspective of God. Yeah. He's just looking for some, he's a nitpicker. Hey, just, just, yeah. You're breaking up again. You're breaking up. I can't. Never you hear the expression, oh, they're a real nitpicker. Yeah. It's all about picking nits. Mm. I never thought of that before. Did you think of it before? Mm. We're talking about getting the nits out. But that's what he thought of God. He's just looking for some, oh, he's just looking for something to pick on me about. Oh boy, can I see something? That is not true. Do you know people that love to find fault? Do you know people that want to point out your faults? They've got the same mentality as Job. They think God is a nitpicker. Right. And they are projecting upon God their own heart. They've made Matt, they've made God in their own image. Yeah, I like what Art said uh, <laughs> some time ago. It's just one of those things that stuck with me, and I keep using it. Get God wrong, get it all. Yeah. And, got it all what, was, what was born uh, from death in, in Adam's heart was born in all of us. Amen. And so we we didn't see God for who he really was. And so Job, like in this case, Job is just seeing him through the carnal mind. Absolutely. You know, and from a skewed or marred image of God in his heart, you know, and that's where, where we've been with the world. You know, the world yeah. doesn't see yeah. God for who he really is. And who is God? God is love. Absolutely. Amen. And it doesn't change. Right. And, and, you know, when I heard this word this morning, I'm like, oh, this is what people need. Because so many people are lighting up. 
they're really discovering the, their beloved identity and they feel a shaking going on, you know, and, and restructuring of their life. And what you have to understand is, and, and I, I emphasize this, God is not trying to get anything from you. No. He doesn't need anything from us. No, he doesn't. He's no. trying to get it to us. In you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He's all about, he's, he's, he's love. And love wants to just share everything you have with other people. It's just, it's just, it's a self, it's self-giving. And so the thing that the Lord is concerned about, our beautiful heavenly father is concerned about is reinforcing our structure so that we're strong enough to be able to take the force of the flow. And I was talking to Jimmy about the pressure washer, you know, the pressure washer, the hose from the pressure washer motor to the spout where the water comes out has to be a very strong hose. Oh, yes. Because it's going to take the pressure. Whereas I have a flimsy hose, one of those Ex, you know the ones that expandable. They go flat. Got it. Yeah, expandable hoses supplying the water to the pressure washer. <laughs> but where the water comes out from the pressure washer to where it's going to do its job, you need a real oh, yeah. strong hose. The intern isn't doesn't take much pressure going out requires yeah. pressure exactly, and so. The Lord wants to increase the pressure. He wants to increase the flow that's coming out. But we've got to be able to take it in and put it out. And oh my goodness, it makes me look at stretching much differently. When I see the pressure on me and I feel like I'm going to burst, it makes me say, Lord, you need to strengthen my infrastructure because I can see uh, that I'm not strong. You understand what I'm saying? He wants to be able to flow through to us and through yeah. us so yeah. much more powerfully. But we've got to be stable. And he made a statement, and I was in the bathroom when I heard it. And I came out like a raving maniac <laughs> because it licked me. Now I'm like, did you hear me? No one heard it but you. Steady, <laughs> steady, being steady, being stable is not a witness of your strength, but a witness you trust in his. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. I love it. It's not about being strong in you. It's being strong in your reliance upon him. Yeah. And it's like, oh, Lord. So I said to my husband, I said, Jimmy, when you really get to me and I feel like exploding, I said, it just shows me that I need to be strengthened. Lord, strengthen me. Amen. I need to, we need to be able to take the pressure. And you know, it reminds me of something I heard years ago. If you have a soup can that's empty, you can squeeze it with your hand. But if it's full, you try squeeze that sucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What we need to be full of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, that uh, of his fullness, we have received, you know, um, and it's as our hearts are, I keep saying as our hearts are established in the truth by the Holy Spirit yeah. and as the heart, as we were purified of these things that 
have caused us not to trust God. Okay. I still think there's, we can say we trust God. Okay. Oh. <laughs> but there's levels of, I see new levels of trust. Yes. Coming that God has taken us to new levels of trust. Um, trusting him with our whole, our, with our, with our life. He is our yes. life. Amen. Amen. We're not trying to preserve our life because he is our life and our, our trust is completely in him and his faithfulness. That's right. You know? But it's the word, again, receive the engrafted word that's able to save your soul, you know, that does the work. So it's not us trying to, to make it happen or, or you know. And, I know and the only strength we want to have is the strength we receive from him. We don't need our own strength. We need no his. No way. No. And that's you right. know, really, to, to tell you the truth, um, trust. Love is not self-seeking. Right. Right. Agape love <laughs> is not about me. Mm -hmm. Love is our salvation. Mm -hmm. If I get full of the love of God, guess what? I'm lost in his love. Yeah. It's not about me. There's no sense of self-protection. Because I've lost it. I've mm -hmm. lost it when I was filled with his love. It all It's all looking out. It's You're not, not lost it. You allow it. No, I've lost myself okay. in him. That's right. Amen. I am in him, not in me. And, and perfect love casts out all fear. And yeah. we have that perfect love. There's nothing to fear. There's no. nothing to fear. There's no. nothing to fear. Absolutely. Yeah, I've been, I've been thinking just... about that. Sorry. No, you go ahead, John. I've been thinking about that word through the week, actually, about maturity, which is another word for trust. And I find that um, sometimes when the pressure comes on me, um, I used to panic and I go, oh, I've got to trust God. I've got, I've got to trust God. But now I'm starting to look at it differently from a perspective of saying, Ah, here's an opportunity for me to grow in my maturity with you, Lord. And as I've been thinking, I remember listening to Billy Graham, and he was giving a bit of a testimony in that, and, and he was talking to Oral Roberts, and they were quite good friends. And uh, Billy Graham, he never did anything in his meetings concerning healing. He said, I stick to evangelism because that's my lane. That's where God has called me. Mm. And um, But Oral Roberts was into the healing. And, and as I thought about that, I thought, Billy Graham didn't need to have all of the trust for healing and all the maturity for healing because God hadn't called him into that kind of ministry, if you like. So I think that's like us with people. We don't need to have a whole lot of maturity in areas of our life that we're sort of not falled into. We'll let somebody else do that. And I was, I, I sent a message to a builder this week. Um, like I've been asked to preach this weekend. I'm right out of my depth. You know, this is not, this is not my thing. I've done it a couple of times, but I'm out of my depth and, I'm hoping, Beulah, the, the airplane ticket comes in time for you to come over here and, and you can preach and I'll sit in the back row and go, amen, sister. And um, <laughs> but you see, everyone's called, if you like, from the Lord to do certain things. Yeah. So this thing about maturity is, um, it's in, in our lane, if you like. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. Let me say this, though, John. <laughs> I asked the Lord, I said, why did you call me to be a pastor? He said, because you need it. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, he, uh, it won't always feel comfortable. Okay. Uh, it, it's, it's, in fact, a lot of times it will feel very uncomfortable because it's just like, oftentimes we're looking at our flesh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and our ability. And, and, and I've said this before too, many times I said, after and I've done been doing this for years, and I still feel very, at times, feelings of 
inadequacy, you know, to do what I'm doing. And I, I said to the Lord one time, I feel, why'd you call me? I feel so inadequate. He says, you are. <laughs> Confirmation. He says, he says my, your sufficient, sufficiency isn't from you. It's from me. That's right. Well, it's that part of what we're talking about, really, about the stretching, you know, and and trusting in that in that certain, you know, it's just like, OK, Lord, here we go. You called me. I'm trusting you. And and it's not my ability. It's your ability that equips right. me. It's just like Paul said, even Paul said, didn't he say I come in in much fear and trembling at times? Yeah. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's just like there's and I'm not sure if you ever totally grow out of that but it's it's really it's really it's just like to me it's showing me how much i need the holy spirit okay to to uh accomplish what he's called me to do and if i feel if i if i feel very listen in just in in, in how i i've seen him work in my life what i'm looking for is not a comfort of the flesh but a, a comfort that comes from the holy spirit when That's i'm right. in the zone in the comfort yeah. zone of the yeah. holy spirit Oh, yeah. I mean, I could run towards Goliath, okay? Absolutely. And that's what we, that's what God wants us to be involved with, the comfort and the sufficiency and the ability of the Holy Spirit, that we're empowered by the Holy Spirit. And there again, it goes right back to love. Because when you're full of the love of God, you got no fear. When you're, when you're wall to wall love, baby, I mean, oh. When I get full of the love of God like that, I mean, your cup's overflowing. I mean, John, you are a sweetheart. You love the Lord. You're yeah. full of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord says, Brother John, don't worry about what you're going to say because I'm going to give you the words. Amen. He's going to give you the words. He's not going to leave you with egg yeah. on your face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah let, let, let me tell you, John, I, I remember a time I... <laughs> visited a church in Florida where they they knew I was coming, but I didn't know I was going to minister <laughs> until they <laughs> told me there. And I remember sitting there waiting till I was going to be called up there, thinking, oh, God, what am I going to minister? You know, the Lord spoke to me. It's not about you. Mm -hmm. And at first, I didn't know exactly what that meant, but I know what it means now. <laughs> I don't don't try to rehearse what you're going to say. Right. Just get up there and I will speak. Yeah. And I'll give you the words. Yeah, yes, you will. Because it's the spirit flowing through this vessel. Yeah. I have to get out of the way. Yeah. Let it go. Let Amen. it go. Absolutely. Well, it goes back to that trust thing, too. It's just like yeah. you know, bringing us to new levels yeah. of trust. That's like, going to happen. The, 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 yeah, the fear is. I hope you show up Lord. What if he does? Because <laughs> I'm in trouble if he don't. You know, thinking well, well, about you know, the he, different... Go ahead. Thinking about yeah. the different levels of trust. You know, uh, the scripture says, in my father's house are many mansions. Yeah. And that should have literally been translated many rooms. Mm -hmm. And just as you said that, it struck me. It's like, wait a minute. I am the house of God. Yeah. And we know that, that that in our heart there are many different compartments. And and as you said that it was like I could see Jesus standing at a door and knocking. And it's like he's standing at every door, at every compartment in your heart, saying, <clears throat> If you'll open the door and let me in, I'll suck with you. And as we let him into those places, into those rooms within our heart, mm -hmm. that he comes in and he sups with us, and yes, during that does. supping. We come to a place where we trust him in all of those rooms. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Amen. That's good. You know, I remember a time when I was asked to do a funeral and um, the things I rehearsed, I didn't have to say half of them. What happens, the Holy Spirit took over and he, he ministered through me. Best it's, way. Amen. Just let him go. <laughs> And that's, uh, you know, that's part of that. In him, we live and move and have our and have our being. Yeah. That's right. What it's we all were him. created for was to, <laughs> you know, to be full, filled with the Holy Spirit of God and to just relax in him. You it know, gives, and carry it's, 
it gives us a chance to grow in him, to just rely and trust on him, what he's saying. Yeah. 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 I had um, a dream last night that I was going to share. It had Beulah in it with me. And um, we were teaching and all of a sudden Beulah says, whoa, stop. <laughs> and she looked over <laughs> and she says, that gentleman in that second row, um, he's not ready to receive. And he was sitting there with his arms crossed over his uh -huh. heart. You know, and there was kind of like a, a darkness there. And she says, we can't receive like that. We have to receive like this. And she threw up her arms and then the bright light, you know, filled the place. And I just felt like that was, you know, him trying to protect his heart with the arm of the flesh. Yeah. How many, so many times we're trying to do it in our own flesh. And he reminded me of when I'd gone through a really hard time, you know, and I was saying, God, I think you hate me now, you know, and I was trying to, con you know, control the situation, and everything. And it wasn't that I didn't have a heart after God. I did because my favorite verse was creating me a clean heart. Oh, God, renew a right spirit in me, you know. And so my heart was after him, but I was still looking to the flesh to perfect that love and to protect me and, to, you know, really be Lord. And so you throw up those arms and you go face to face with the father. And then that bright light of his love can just set you free so that you don't have to feel like you're protecting your own heart or you're protecting your own life. Good word. Good word. Yeah, because it's not about your glory. It's about him being glorified in, in all that we do and say. And we become kind of a conduit yeah. uh, through which he uh, flows. Yeah. <laughs> we should be. That's I, right. I mean, with, <laughs> and and you know what? At the same, it, the caution is not to doubt that that is true. If God's called you to do something, He will provide the grace, the ability, the power to do it. Absolutely. But it goes back to what Bill started off with about the flow, the increase of that flow through us, in us, and, and, and really it goes along with what the Lord was speaking to me earlier this morning. It's amazing how that happens, you know. But Jesus said, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. That's, right. that's a lot of water. Uh, Rick. <laughs> and that's, well, he reminded me of that. Is the river from, is it Ezekiel 47? Seven? I don't know about how the, 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 the river flowed from the, <laughs> the, the temple to the throne, yeah. you know, and we're the temple of the Lord. Yes, we are. And mm -hmm. so he, he began to show me how that, you know, when Adam, when Adam believed the lie over the truth, okay, there was a river that was born in him, but it was a polluted river. Mm -hmm. Okay, and out of this, out of his heart began to flow. It says, out of the heart flows all these things. If you want to, you know, talk about where's this all this evil come from? Well, it doesn't come from God. It comes from a polluted stream yeah. out of yeah. the heart of man. And so what, what the Lord came to do, he came to take away, you know, that and, and to put a new river in us called a river of life. And, and out of that stream, just like he told the, the woman at the well. You know, uh, if you drink from this source, then you'll have a. Go ahead, John. You're biting at the bit. <laughs> oh, I, I I am because I I listened to, uh, sorry, Dion. Yeah, yeah, Dion. Yeah, and and you said face to face, uh -huh. and as I've been studying this week, trying to put a word together, um, and and you've just confirmed a few things to me, even what you're saying, and and you said face to face, and I was. Nicodemus, he came to Jesus in the middle of the night. Yeah. But you know, it was a face to face encounter with nobody else around. Okay. It was a one on one. And then Jesus says, You need to be born again. You need to get that river of life on the inside of you. you and go. then and then the woman from Samaria, she came to Jesus, and Jesus sent all the disciples away. And once again, like with Nicodemus. It was a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship, just the two of them. And he said the same thing to the woman at the well as what he said to Nicodemus in different words. You need to be born again. Have the Holy Spirit inside of you and to give you everlasting life. 
And yeah. I thought, that's us yeah. in our walk with Jesus. That's what we have. With each one of us, we have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him, and we can look to him and say, uh, and, and the thing that I thought about was, with uh, with Nicodemus, he used to call him God. But, mm. you know, we come into his family and it all changes. And we say, Abba, Father. That's yeah. right. Sounds like you got a message there, John. Sounds like a message to me, John. <laughs> <laughs> and it, say, it says the glory, listen, it says the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall fill the earth as the waters to the sea. So there's something about this 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 river of life. You know, it's it flow. It it was flowing out of the woman at the well. He, Jesus said it will flow out of us, and how that would happen. Okay, and it's all there. I mean, the Holy Spirit's just connecting the dots for us, right? I mean, face yeah. to face. You know, we're seeing this uh, faith as what we behold is what we begin to manifest. Oh, we behold the glory of God, the Lord, in the face of Jesus. Yeah. And so I see the veils are coming off big time. Mm -hmm. The veils are being lifted, coming off. We're seeing and we're becoming a reflection yeah. of truly the true God who is love. And that love is going to flow like a river. Yeah. yeah. It's just gonna, the, I see it as a tsunami of love and the yeah. tsunami yeah. of the spirit of love that's going to just sweep this Absolutely. river. Absolutely. And and listen, and that's not just for America. That's for every people. The whole world. God loves the entire world. Yes, He does. You know. Uh, and you know, as Beulah said, the flow is increasing. Yeah. <clears throat> the pressure is increasing. Yes. And it's because God is revealing unto us our true being. Yes. Who we really are. And, and we're not doubting that like we once did because of tradition, traditional teaching, really. Yeah. Uh, and we're realizing that God does love us. God, God is making of us a new wine skin that can handle the new wine. Yeah. Uh, you know, going back to the wedding at Cana, I think uh, the first uh, miracle the Lord did. I remember a woman at a Bible study I was hosting. Uh, she, she made a statement that she didn't even know what she was saying, I don't believe, but she said, look beyond the water to the wine. Mm. And a lot of what's happened in the church is they can't see beyond the water. But it's the wine. It, now, it is a flow, and the, the Lord also speaks of it as a spring, uh, springing up into a river of, of life, yeah. unto salvation. But that water has that spirit in it that speaks of the wine, uh, uh, and and you can get hung up in looking at what we have been, what we once were before the cross and and not what God has made us to be after the cross. And that's a new wineskin. Uh, and, and a wineskin is designed for wine or the spirit. Mm -hmm. And there's no limitations to the spirit. The limitations are in this flesh. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if we open ourselves up to that flow, yeah. the flow will increase. Yeah. But we can't doubt because as soon as we think it's us, <laughs> you, 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 I'm sure, Rick, you, I've been ministering before, preaching, and, 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 and suddenly the doubt, and it gets hard plowing. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Because, <laughs> but that. but that's because your focus is yep. come on the flesh. Yeah, it's wrong. That's Trust him. Trust him. It's yeah. right. It's all back to love. <laughs> yeah. Love is our salvation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The end. Uh, First Peter, First Timothy one six, I think, the end of the commandment is, is love, love out of a pure heart, 
the end of all instruction Good. is to bring us to love. Yeah. God is love. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's not something he has. It's something he is. It's his ism. Yeah. I am. And, and it, to be filled with all the fullness of God, you have to know the love of Christ. Absolutely. But the thing is, I am. I am what? I am love. That's mm -hmm. where we're coming to. Okay. And it's all, I mean, the word in me this morning is the flow. Mm -hmm. If he can get it to you, he can get it out of you. You get it to you, get it through you. If he can get it out of you, he'll get it through you and to you. And uh, a word just came to me in Proverbs. Remember what I said. He's reinforcing the integrity of our being. We, we have got to be able to be so solid in love that no matter what he does through us, it's not going to knock us off of our feet. That's right. And this is an area that we really don't think about, but it's in Proverbs. I'm going to read it from King James, but I'm going to read it in the Passion. In Proverbs 27, 1. As the, as the finding pot for silver and the furnace for gold, so is a man to his praise. Fire is the way to test the purity of silver and gold. But the character of a man is tested by giving him a measure of fame. <clears throat> Can, are we so, are we so loved? that we will direct all the glory to God. Come on. And what I saw the other day, there is an honor in the Trinity. Yeah. There is such an honor in the Trinity. And the Father so loved the world that he gave the Son. The son came and he glorified the father. Yes. It was always whenever anybody prays him, hey, I can do nothing of myself. Right. It's the father. Always yeah. focusing on the praise. And then he says, it's good for you that I go because I'm going to send the spirit of truth who's going to take what I've done, the finished work that I completed, and he's going to make it real in you. Mm -hmm. He's going to finish the work in you that I've accomplished. And when he comes, he's not going to talk about himself. He's going to glorify me. Yes. Okay. And when the Holy Spirit is come in that day, you'll know that I'm in the Father. The Father's in me. You're in me. We're hit together in God. Yeah. Okay. And when the same love that is in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit permeates us, then we will give glory to Jesus. Amen. It's not about us. You will hate. You will hate that. You will hate any distraction from the King of Kings. You know, when, when I saw that, when I saw that on Sunday, I mean, that song, I don't even know what song we were singing, but it was the song where it said he was the king of kings. And when that, when that statement, when we sang, well, I weren't singing, I was just wailing. But when that was said, I saw Jesus. I saw Jesus carrying his cross. Oh, battered and bruised and the crown of thorns on his head. And 
that was an experiential knowledge that surpasses knowledge. Mm -hmm. You can hear it. Mm -hmm. It's like Job says, I heard about you with the hearing of the ear. Mm -hmm. But now I've seen. Okay? <clears throat> There's such a difference between hearing about something and seeing something. Yes. Yeah. It's like I said in the video I made the other day. It's the difference between reading a menu about the food mm -hmm. and eating the food. Yeah. You can never Big difference there. <laughs> You can never be satisfied with reading the menu. Yeah. You can never be satisfied by reading the Bible. Yeah. Knowledge can only bring you so far. Yeah. You see, it's like I see it like, like Moses bringing the children, the Hebrew children out of Egypt. But Moses was not able to bring them into the promised land. Only Yeshua could do that. And the thing is, the Bible leads us. It, it's the pedagogue, you know, the pedagogue, the law brings us. It's a tutor to bring us to Christ. But then we're handed over to the Holy Spirit to make real in us what Jesus did for us. And when that happens... And, and he reveals Jesus to you. I said to Jimmy yesterday, I said, oh, my goodness, Jimmy, do you realize, thank God I got Jimmy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> do you realize that the veil is not taken away until we honor? You hear that? It's the honor in the Godhead. When you honor the son, you honor the father also. Yeah. If you don't honor the son, you're not honoring the father. That's for sure. And now Jesus has said, listen, I'm going away and I'm handing you over to the spirit of truth. And he will lead you and guide you into all truth. Well, how can he lead you and guide you into all truth? If you're not honoring him, he can't even take the veil off your heart and you can't see squat. And the reason, you know, I, the video I made yesterday about control is an illusion. You know, Brother Doug said that in his book. And people, the reason people are so afraid to yield to the Holy Spirit's control is they don't want to lose control. But I got news for you, honey. You never had control. <laughs> You're either being controlled by the spirit of sin and death. That spirit of the world that hates God, hates you because you're made in his image. He wants to keep you from everything God has for you. Now, we can either yield our members to that and have horrible consequences <laughs> or yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Come on now. That wants nothing from us but to give us everything the Father has. That's right. And when you, you, can you see how clear it is? The enemy knows that if you see the face of Jesus, you're going to be changed into the very same image. Not by you trying, no. but by the Holy Spirit doing the work in you. Yeah. So it's all he's got to do is stop you from seeing Jesus. Well, I mean, one thing, you don't put a scarecrow in an empty field you only put a scarecrow where there's crop, amen? Mm -hmm. So the enemy wants to make us afraid of God because he don't want us bellying up to God because he knows the minute you see him, he's, he's history. And so it's all about honoring the Holy Spirit so Holy Spirit can do his job in you to make you 
just like Jesus. And you know what's going to happen? If you become just like Jesus, you're going to be full of the same love and compassion that Jesus had in the face of all of his enemies. For sure. Oh, man. It's just glorious. And that's why I love this word about, you know, how this word is working in our hearts to purify our hearts from boasting in the flesh. Because it's, and I was just looking at uh, First Corinthians, you know, um, what is it, chapter one? Yeah, it says that no, in 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom of God, and righteousness, <laughs> sanctification, redemption, that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. So a lot of the glorying of the flesh is because uh, we think, uh, well, it's finished, but not quite, you know, finished, but unfinished, you know, and it's uh, created this glory be to me, or glory be to Jesus and me. You know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's just like, so, so the Lord is purifying our hearts from that because we see that we are complete in him. Yes, okay. we are. He declares we are complete in him. Okay. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. Okay. And so that takes the eyes off self because he did it. We didn't do it. No. Right. And well, so it's just like, where's the glory going to go but to him? You know, because it, it's already complete. And so that, that release of what's already, it's like work out your salvation with fear and trembling for God is, is the one who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. It, it, yes. You know, people read that as work for your salvation, but it's no, it's work, work out what's already been in, you know, mm -hmm. by understanding who's, who it is. And this, you know, I always say this, you didn't begin a good work for God. God began mm -hmm. a good work in you. That's right. And he's faithful to complete it. So when we, when we begin to embrace that um, and rest in it, rest in, in in the working of the Lord and seeing what he has already created us to be. We cease from all our works and striving. Amen. I think it, 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 it causes us then to bear the fruit of that, of that just thankfulness and glory to the Lord, if that makes any sense. It's just like, yes, yes. you know, I mean, so many people, I mean, we're thinking, you know, a lot of people that are stuck in, in this mixture, you know, of, it's Jesus plus what I do, you know, they, they will bear the fruit of, I'm glad I'm not like the others, you know, because yeah. I do this, I do that. And, and I do the other thing. So it's just like their boast in the, is in themselves. And at yeah, the same time, they're exactly. criticizing those who aren't doing what they're doing. <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of that scripture as you just say that, Rick, um, it was mentioned before, um, Perfect love casts out fear. You know, as we learn of Jesus' perfect love for us, mm. then it takes the, away the fear of letting go to him. Because Don't sometimes it's, it's hard to let go to Jesus. It's hard to let go of giving him our life because, well, do you really love me? Do you love me that much? Absolutely. And, and I think... I think we grow in that as we grow in that love um, that he has for us, then we that fear of letting go of our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's no fear, there's no fear in love. And right. we are growing up as Ephesians. So let me turn there. Uh in Ephesians, it says, um, and let me say, but just for the sake of the video, that scripture I quoted for uh, um, uh, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, fear yeah. and trembling. It's really, he's talking about standing in awe of the one. Absolutely. Who actually is in you, who lives in you and is working this out, you know. Yeah. Well, let me go there. Thing. Let me go there since I'm there. It says... Um, <laughs> In, it's uh, Philippians 2.12. It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, 
work out your own salvation with fear and trembling yeah. for or because this fear and trembling is because of something. And this fear and trembling is a shaking in awe that it's God in you, both giving you the will and the ability to do his good pleasure. It's like, me, it's not about me doing anything. It's God in me, both giving me the desire to do it, but then he gives me the supply to accomplish it. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. And while I'm still on that page, <laughs> may as well read it. Before I go to Ephesians, being made perfect in love, yeah. uh, in that same chapter, you were talking about vainglory. And it says, chapter 2, verse 1, if there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship in the spirit, that koinonia, that is the communion, that is that periphoresis, that dance, we're in the dance, baby. Father loving the son, the son loving the father, the spirit loving us. And here we are. We're in that circle dance of communion. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, mm. having the same love as what? The communion of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm. Being of one accord and one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Mm. But in loveliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than themselves. Mm. Vain glory mm. is from the Adamic nature. Mm. And mm. we wanna we wanna see the end of vain glory. We want to see the end of that mind. Yeah. Well, back to Second Corinthians 3, mm. when it says, even today. When Moses is read, there's a veil over the heart. Mm -hmm. But when the heart will turn to the Lord, mm -hmm. and the passion says, and the Lord I'm speaking of is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. When the heart makes the Spirit Lord, the veil is taken away, and we behold as in a mirror mm -hmm. the glory of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need that veil gone, baby. Yeah. Because yeah. we need to see the face of the glory of the Lord. Yeah. And we're changed into the same image mm -hmm. from glory to, to glory. glory. This is not different levels of glory. This is away from the glory that was in the face of Moses. Yeah. There was a glory. There was a glory to the law. There was a glory to self-accomplishment. But when you see the glory of the Lord, you are being turned away from, apo, away from yeah. that glory because you want this glory and you just put an end to vain glory. Yeah. But you didn't do it. The Spirit did it in you. Yes, amen. That's good. Yeah. yeah. That's a that's a very important. I mean, that scripture keeps coming back right to us. Yeah. It keeps bringing us back to that Second Corinthians three and four. Yeah. That's uh, two chap two two uh, chapters. I would very just meditate over and over. There, it's packed. It's like Romans. Well, it's all packed, you know. But it's just yeah. like the Holy Spirit during certain seasons at times draws your attention to a certain place, you know, and. In all this, you know, what I like about this is we're not just having some kind of random Bible studies, you know, to fill our oh. head with a bunch of knowledge. Right. You know I'm saying? We're saying, the Holy Spirit, where what are you showing us today? Where, yeah, what yeah. do you want us to see? That's... What do you want us to understand? What do you want us to be, our, our hearts be established in? Isn't that a beautiful thing? 
to know yeah. that it's not up to us, but we can just trust the leading of the Holy Spirit to lead us, the Spirit of yes. Truth to lead us and guide us into all truth because He knows, right? And so, yes, it's like, man has has really, and and I'm not against Bible schools, but I mean, you know, we we've taken it and thought, well, if I can just get a degree, then I'll be equipped, you know. Yeah. Right. Well, a degree won't yeah. equip you for ministry, okay? And it, I, I wrote on that, we've outsourced a lot of uh, what the body ministry is supposed to be. We've outsourced it to the professional, okay? Yeah. And, and and that what has done is shut down the body of Christ. Amen. Say, who am I? I'm not equipped to minister. I've never been to Bible school. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, Jesus didn't say, uh, before you go anywhere, go to Bible school and get go it no yeah. he said receive <laughs> the promise of the father the holy spirit right and yeah. so yeah. you are fully equipped with the holy spirit the one who lives in us and now it's a matter of us just yielding to the, the oh. lordship of the holy spirit amen and you know in second corinthians 4 this is referring to that honor again i tell you that there is honor in the godhead there is no jealousy, no. only honor and love for one another. And here in uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 6, it says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God yeah. In the face of face Jesus of... Christ. Yes. Now you see, the Father is saying, you want to have life? Well, then you're going to have to honor my son. Mm-hmm. Okay? And Jesus said, no man can come to me except the Father draw him to me. Mm-hmm. And Jesus said, no man can know the Father except through me. So this is a triune ethic. Mm. And so when the Lord Jesus says, okay, now I'm going to go away, but I'm going to turn you over to the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. Uh, And he's going to be the one that's going to unveil everything I am to you. You can't get there without honoring the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. That is so good, Bueller. So much of the church is honoring the Father and honoring the Son, but there is no honoring of the Holy Spirit. He's He's left at the door, if you like. Absolutely. And, um, that's that's wonderful. That's a great word. And, and, you it's, know really, what? and it's really for us, you know. Absolutely. It's really like he says, well, us come on not being honored. Where's my honor? You know, it's just not like, you know, they're up there in a uh, place of insecurity and yeah. want people to worship yeah. the land. But it's really, a, it's about how, how God knows, he knows our, he knows us, he knows the heart and he knows where our, our attention needs to be for our freedom, for and our you know, liberty. As we come to understand the true character of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that character is born in us. Mm-hmm. And you want to see an end to division and strife and all the nonsense mm-hmm. in the church? Let's get filled with the love of God. And, you know, I truly believe that the reason we're not seeing what the world saw in the early church is because the love of God has really not been formed in his body Mm -hmm. there is just so much selfishness and self grandizement and jealousy and Mm -hmm. hatred and all the works of the flesh and it's just disgusting it's all disgusting and uh you know what you got to be just so filled with the love of god that you can wrap your arms around people that are so filled with venom and squeeze it out of them until they're full of the love of God. Amen. Let me me say, say something about this Holy Spirit as well. 
uh, in in Second Corinthians four, where just prior to the scripture that Beulah read, uh, Paul said, "For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus Christ." So one who's speaking of themselves and the things of themselves in terms of the flesh is not speaking from the Holy Spirit. No. No. It, no. And you hear what I'm saying? Yes. So, uh, and, you know, I've been writing some on, on, on the, a false image. You know, the image we're to behold, we become what we behold, and the image we be, are to behold is the one made in the image and likeness of the Father, the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit will speak in those terms. Yeah. Uh, what they, what we, Paul say something like, you have not so learned Christ when he's rebuking the church as the truth is in Jesus. Mm. So if we're beholding his face, we're not worshiping idols. If we're beholding the face of an image that's not him, we're worshiping idols, really. Mm. Uh, if it's another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel, another God, yeah. uh, it's idolatry. That's right. uh, so in what Paul said in uh, 2 Corinthians 3 about the veil uh, that pertains to the law, like Buddha said, being taken out of the way, <clears throat> and we with open face behold as in a glass the glory of the Lord. I believe it's the same thing Paul's talking about because this has been all about love, being filled with the love of God. What he says in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, now we see through a glass darkly, still veiled, but then, this is the day we live in, but mm -hmm. then face to face, now I know, uh, 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 now I know in part, but, but then, then shall I know even also as I am known. Amen. Mm. We're coming to know as we are known. Yeah. We are loved. We yeah. are, as I said, the reality of our being is being opened up to us. The reality, yeah. Okay? That we see clearly yeah. the face of our Lord Amen. and changed into that glory. Yes. Right? And Amen. you know, now let's go back to John in his epistle if we say we love god and hate our brother mm -hmm. we're a liar yeah. and the truth isn't in us mm -hmm. listen there is no way you can be face to face with love and not be loved yeah. right mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we've been all over uh, 2 Corinthians 3 and 4, and, and I like what Art just said when he brought up the deal in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, because we, we become, we, we know as we are known. Yes. And those both of those words indicate intimacy, and the more intimate, and that goes to what I said earlier about letting him into the different chambers of our heart. But uh, you guys were in Second Corinthians 3 and 4. Well, that takes us over to chapter 5, where it talks about the love of God constrains me, at, or, or literally is the love of God compels me. And this goes yeah. to what Beulah was saying about the control issue. I was reading that verse uh, a few nights ago, and the Lord started talking to me about fear. And he said, have you noticed how fear can come in and grip you? And, and actually take control and cause you to do things that are absolutely illogical. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I've had fear hit me to the point where I was literally paralyzed. And I mm -hmm. think that's really the reason that a lot of car wrecks will happen. Somebody will see it coming and fear grips them and they're just paralyzed. And they don't do what would be just a simple maneuver that would keep them from having the wreck. But right. what the Lord was showing me in that, he said, he said, there is a place in my spirit where, where the love of God can come and grip you like that. 
and cause you to do things that are that seem absolutely illogical. And there's several times in my life where I've experienced that. And every time I experienced it, it resulted in some kind of miracle, either for me or on the behalf of somebody I was acting toward. I mean, yeah. it can lit- it can literally come in and take control. Amen. I like that. You know, it says the love yes. that has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So when you receive the Holy Spirit, the, the fullness of God, you receive love. I mean, you have love in you, okay? Love isn't something, uh, unless it's the uh, world's kind of love, the eros or whatever kind of love, but we're talking about agape love, agape love. The God kind of love is in you and is being perfected in you, okay? And what the Lord has been laying on my heart, and usually the church gets real silent when I talk about this, is that we miss a lot of opportunity to be perfected in the love of God Come uh, on. when it comes to our enemy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. That's, that, good. that's the area that not, not the church. It's the scriptures that people want to just uh, pass yeah. over. No, but it that's says, good. In Romans 12, he says this Bless those who persecute yeah. you. Bless and do not curse. Mm-hmm. Rejoice with those who rejoice and re- weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high, on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. And then he says, repay no evil for evil, having regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it's possible, as much depends on you, live peaceably, beloved. And then he, and then he talks about um, if your enemy, oh, he says believe, in 19, beloved, do be loved. He wants to remind you, uh, yeah. you are the beloved of God. Do not mm-hmm. avenge yourselves, but rather give place to the wrath where it is, is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. That's right. So if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For if in doing so, you'll heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Right. It would behoove us to really grab a hold of that. Okay, what Paul just said here. Yeah. If you want to be perfected in love, you know, it's just like, and and uh, by the by our own ability and strength, it's probably impossible for us to do that. But the Holy Spirit can, works who's in us can yeah. cause us to even love those. Like Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah, and, that's that's, right. and that's why yeah. I think that we've been missing out on, on opportunities of being perfected in the love of God. Um, I, I just saw something as you said that. Moses put out his staff and the water dried up and they walked through on dry ground. Mm -hmm. But when it came to go into the land of Canaan, they had to step in to the water. Mm. And when their feet went into the water, it dried up. And so what I'm seeing is sometimes there's an opportunity and you might not feel it, but you step in. Right. And the minute you step in, because you know that's what the father would have you to do, yeah. then he fills you yeah. to do yeah. it. Exactly. Look at that. That's beautiful. We just did a mm-hmm. full circle. Philippians, because it's God in you. No, no, no. To give you the will. Okay. Okay. So even when you know your flesh might not be feeling it, your heart is saying this is the right thing to do. Come on. And when you step into it, then He fills you with the ability, and it's like you never would have known the love of God in that situation. Gotcha now. Had you not just allowed him to use you. That's what I'm saying. And also I want to say too, where he says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. He, he's not saying, I love them and I'll get them later. No, no. He says, and, I will wreck them then. You know what? what, he says, take, what he take, let me say, what he takes vengeance I on. I will recompense. What he takes vengeance on is the, the very thoughts and the beliefs that's causing these enemies to respond and the lies that's causing these enemies to act just like it has in us the way yeah. it does. And that's that coals of fire on their head. It's like yeah. what he's dealing with is, is 
is the thoughts and belief systems of man believing a lie over the truth. So he says, if you love them, if, if you love your enemy, feed them, guess what? He says, don't be, don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil, evil with enemy. good. So it's just like your enemy will go like, what in the world is happening? And, uh, and you know something, I was going to expand on that because the, the scripture came to my mind that we are co-laborers with God. Yes, we are. We are cooperating with God. So what we do <clears throat> gives God access into people's lives. Yeah. And this is what I saw because it says in verse 19, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. And that wrath is that leaning forward to do something, okay? So he's saying, listen, guys, don't fall for the bait, okay? But cooperate with me yes. so that, that I can get in there. Mm -hmm. And he says, he says, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, what is it there for? That's it. It's joining what he just said. Mm -hmm. He says, you know, make a place for me to yeah. be able to work, that yeah. I can lean forth and do what I want to do. But I can't do that if mm -hmm. you take it upon yourself and revenge yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But, and also as we reach out to our enemy mm -hmm. to feed them, to love them yes as we love our enemies it changes them and it changes us absolutely as we love them our heart turns towards them when you re act lovingly to somebody you don't in particular maybe you know you let the the holy father the father lead you yes. as he does that our hearts change oh yes, yes. Towards the know. person, and the person changes, and after a while, they're not even an enemy anymore. They're a brother. So it, listen, God, God is two things. He's love, and he's a consuming fire. <laughs> what we're seeing about the coals of fire on the yeah. head of the person is that aspect of God Absolutely. That, that consumes or burns away anything that is not of love's kind. Right. That's what the fire does. Yes. It's a purging thing, but but it's always love based. Absolutely. And you know what? When you're loving your enemy, you're in agreement. You're in agreement with the father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right. a co-laborer. Okay. Right. You're you're doing it. You're doing what he said. Love your enemy. Because that's what he does. So you're cooperating. It's a joint effort yeah. between yeah. you yeah. Yeah. and Yeah, God. you're yielding yourself to the Holy Spirit. Really. Absolutely, absolutely. When and Paul you know, said, present your bodies a living yeah. sacrifice, that's what that's really saying. Yeah. You're yielding yourself so that God can flow through you. And, and you know what, brother? About a week ago, I posted that on Facebook. What did God do to the sacrifice? He consumed it in fire. Yeah. Oh, and you know, when I see that, I'm like, Lord, here I am. <laughs> you know, I, just, living, I was, I was just thinking that when we, when we, and I feel an excitement about mm -hmm. loving our enemies. Mm -hmm. So it's just like taking us to a new level. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Love, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's uh, I think I think that's a huge, huge point. It's just like, you know, it's like Stephen, don't lay this thing to their charge. And who was converted? Saul. Yeah. I mean, that exactly. was the goad. That was the final goad. Yeah, you know, the, absolutely. Um, for the uh, road to Damascus. But it's just like it makes no sense to the natural mind. OK, no, it's it's exactly. like, the opposite. Yeah, yeah. This is what I call uncommon sense. We want vengeance and we want, you know, we want to get even. You know, we want to see them pay. We want to see them pay. <laughs> we want to see them pay. We, we want to see our comfort that way. Yeah. We don't want to pay. 
No. no. We don't want to pay, but no. we want to see them pay something wrong <laughs> with that picture. That's true. I find in Christianity that this word love is banded around a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I have never quite understood because coming in through the 60s and that, yeah. you know, we had the hippie movement and everybody loves one another. Oh. <laughs> That's the one, Rich. Peace. And, and I came up through life and all you ever hear on the radio was love songs and they still do it. And and love is a word that is banded around so much. Yeah. And and you come into the church and they all talk about love. I would have to say that um, I've been very naive in my life, yeah. extremely naive when it comes to loving people. And I used to feel very guilty and feel like I had to love everybody else. And God loved everybody else, but God didn't love me. But I've got to love everybody else. Mm -hmm. And that was the number one thing. And it's still preached today in the church. But the thing that I've, and look, I've had a group of people, I may have said this before, I had a group of people that didn't like me in a sporting arena. Mm -hmm. And I never wanted to fight them. I never wanted to get them back. However, loving them, well, I don't know about that. I just don't want to fight you and argue with you and I would come away. And, <laughs> and it was very interesting because I had a prayer time last week. Yeah. And I ended up praying for all of these people. And after I finished praying for them, I went, gosh, that's definitely the Holy Spirit because I would never have thought of praying, praying for their salvation or anything like that because I wasn't thinking like that. Yeah. But I find in Christendom we're all told to go out and love your enemies and all of that. But what about this word trust? When we love people, but does that mean we still have to trust them? And this is the part that I'm starting to look at. And it, it Christendom just says, I'll just go out and love everybody. But what does that actually look like? We see in 1 Corinthians 13, it talks about love and don't get them back. But what is it in, in reality? What does it look like on a daily basis? Because... I've been naive and just wanted to trust everybody. We all, hey, we've all got to love one another. We all trust one another. Hey, happy days, you know. That's not reality in life, whether that's Christendom or being in the world. So I'm still trying to work this out. So Can when I you talk about love, it needs to be a little bit more clear to me. Yeah, sure. John, though, what you're supposed to do is trust God, not everybody. Okay, trust that God can bring about his purposes in you loving them uh, and, and not necessarily them. All we do is love them. I don't know that we have to tie trust to that love in regards to them, but trust God that he is the one that brings good out of evil or good out of anything right and i think it goes back to what we were talking about that face to face too because um when we come face to face with love and i had a little thing that i found this week that i thought was real powerful and it says come and look at my face gaze into the glory until you are transformed i will give you new eyes my eyes in which you will see true understanding so I think that when we are looking at his eyes and looking through his eyes of love, then we're transformed. He says, when you look through my eyes, the world around you changes. It says, when you see the sick, I see them healed. When you see the lost, I see them asleep and ready to be awakened. When you see darkness approaching, I see the enemy defeated. And when I look at you, I see you complete, whole, beautiful, lacking nothing. And so I think that that's how we have to love our enemies or anyone or ourselves or anything is we look full into his face and say, God, help me to see it like you see it. Because yeah. when we have his sight, his opinion, his heart mm -hmm. for that situation, then that is love. And then we get the wisdom to know how to react out of his heart. And that's called walking after the spirit too, instead of trying to make our own judgments. 
Thank you. So much. What I do, you know, that's that tree of knowledge of good and evil type okay. thing, you know, that we've all kind of function from, you know, walking by our own opinion and judgment. And it's just okay. like, that's part of really, you know, and this is all working together, you know, putting, helping us to, to, to look to the Lord. I mean, he's working in us. He's working out the things that have been in us and uh, he's bringing clarity. He's removing the veil for us to see him as he is so that we are actually first trusting him more than anything. Right. Okay. And, uh, and being filled with his love. And in that just, I mean, the Lord, the Holy Spirit is going to show us and direct us. I mean, we are created to be directed by the Holy Spirit and his wisdom and his discernment. And I think that's where a lot of it has gotten into trouble is we, we still vacillate between, you know, uh, taking things in our own hands or leaning to our own, our own mind, our own wisdom on, yeah. on what we should do. And the Holy Spirit, I'm just, I mean, the Holy Spirit is drawing more attention more and more of my attention to him and his working in me and and taking the lead right and helping me to see that hey without him i have no discern discernment i have zero discernment with it makes me think of god god loves us but then i'm thinking does god trust us is there is there a difference in in that there like he he trusts you rick to be a pastor for instance, no, no, that's like he trusts you to do that for him. Uh, does does God trust us as his children or does he just love us as his children? And said, but yeah, that's OK. But I, I don't trust you to go over there. I trust Billy Graham to be Billy Graham and go out to all the world. But uh, no, I don't trust you to go and do that or whatever. Do you there... know, John, it reminds me of a. A story I just heard about this guy that made these rugs, these very expensive rugs, and his six year old or eight year old granddaughter wanted to do it. And, uh, you know, she's doing it and he's doing it. And then when they turned it over, it was a masterpiece. It was gorgeous. And somebody <laughs> said, she didn't make one mistake. And yeah. he said, she didn't make one right stitch. But I incorporated all of her mistakes and and compensated <laughs> for it and made a masterpiece. So, John, it's not that he needs to trust us. Yeah. He trusts his ability to do what he wants, even though we could be totally flawed. <laughs> it, it would behoove us to have an ear developed that we can hear the word of the Lord in yeah. anything that we Ab come up to. Absolutely. The Lord is able and absolutely. willing to compensate yeah. us for what errors we have by giving absolutely. us the truth. Absolutely. Amen, Thank brother. So That's awesome. Well, this has been good. It's already yeah. 11 30, right? Yeah, it is. Wow. This is time flies when you're having fun. Sure. <laughs> and we covered a lot of ground, but uh, I think it's, you know, every week is different. You know, there's a, a little bit of a different word that the Lord's bringing us. And, uh, yeah. and it's been very enlightening and in encouraging. And uh, it's really, he just confirms too the words. I mean, many, many of you that have shared today, I mean, it just confirmed what the Holy Spirit had already been dealing with you and laying on your heart. Mm -hmm. And it's just an amazing thing to watch. Amen. Good. I hear what Laura has to say. Yeah, Laura. Ah, she heard you. Turn it up. Oh, there it is. Man, you guys are awesome. <laughs> um. You're awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me go outside. Oh, I'm in a hundred year old house. Mm. Well, partly. So, um, Beulah, that video that you sent me, I've been listening to a couple times yeah. with, uh, 
is it Damon? Is yeah. that his name? Yeah. Um, and today, okay, so I just have to say something, you know, your relationship with God is unique. And there's that um, each person has their own relationship. And something that God always does is he always, uh, and I think he does this for everyone, but he puts things on your heart throughout the week to meditate on. And you might meditate on them or you, you might ignore them. But then he brings someone else along <laughs> to um, just confirm like, hey, this is something I want you to take a look at. And um, uh, something that Damon said um, about the archer. Do you remember that part when he was talking about the archer and he said, yeah. uh, when, key. yeah, there's a, there's a, a place of pulling back. And I know like I've been ignoring God as far as like pulling, not really ignoring. I've, I've gotten rid of certain people in my life, but, um, he is bringing me into this place of, um, just yielding, um, in, in area, just stirring my heart really, but it, it's the environment. And he was talking about the, the butterfly, which we all know. I love that, um, illustration of, uh, metamorphosis, metamorphosis. Um, it, but the, the thing that hit me was the environment. Um, I've been in, a very dark environment so of course when I'm not putting myself or pulling back um to be close to him and I'm I'm going with the I guess the current you know um of society and the world um I'm going to start to think like them mm -hmm. um and you mentioned power washers. I thought that was funny because my, I'm I'm in the world of power washers when it comes to my dad. He owns a power washing company, so it's just kind of like that. You know, the fact that you use that as an illustration, um, it was just kind of a kiss for me. But um, just as far as like, um, I know that this um, God's reassuring my heart um into seeking after him and yielding in a place of uh knowing and not not um hold on i'm being called hold on one sec trace okay yeah um we're really close <laughs> um so I think we lost her. Nope, you didn't lose me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm starting to hear him more. Uh, I think that uh, there has been this place um, of confusion and, and self-centered focus that I've I've been present in for the last um, several years that I, I haven't been able to hear him as loudly, you know, um, because for me, something, uh, Rick, I was starting to watch your video and you gave a scripture. Um, what was it? The word, basically, when you read the word in the flesh, it can be, it, it's death. Um, and when you're reading it in the spirit, it's yeah. life and truth. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. for a while, you know, the scriptures like, 
you, uh, you're a dog that returns back to the, <laughs> it's vomit, you know, those things. Uh, I started reading the word and it was death to me. And I, and I was having a hard time opening the Bible because every time I read it, it, it was condemning because I was reading it from a place uh, my, my heart was positioned to um, save my life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and not to lay it down. And, and so, and really this place of like, Hey, you were saved, but but you turned away from God. So now you're condemned. And um, you, you did have new wine skin, but that bursted when you decided to turn back to the world. Yeah. And so all of these things, God's really bringing me into this new understanding and all of this, I feel like all of it, he, you know, he knows me, he knows the end from the beginning. And there's a place where um, he's going to use that for a deeper intimacy with him. Mm-hmm. Um so I really appreciate that. I appreciate um, just listening to everyone talk. Um, you know, something else, it's been almost like a tap on the shoulder when he's talking and, uh, okay, I will. Um, I think, John, you were talking about um, not having the calling for something. Uh, sometimes I'm in and out when I clean because it's hard to concentrate on, or not hard to concentrate. I'm just in and out. Um, but uh, you were talking about it, something not being your calling, and um, that just like right then I felt like God was speaking to just this. Um, you're called to be a child of God in whatever arena there is. You're when you're yielded. Um, doesn't matter if you're an evangelist, a pastor, a, a teacher. You're in different walks of your life. You're going to be every part of those things um, because He's flowing, and it's a place of complete. You know, I've been thinking about surrender and, and Beulah, you talked about control and how it's an illusion. I'm sorry, I'm taking so much. There's just a lot going on in my heart. Um, there's that place of like, it's an illusion. And it uh, when you're one with him, I picture the butterfly and I've said this before, but the caterpillar is still there but now it has wings and it's becoming something together with god Uh, there's no work to be done it's um it's um it's all expression so even in the things that we do um it's an expression of love in all things. Um, anyway, uh, I could keep going on in my, I'm, I'm getting a little distracted because I have several dogs around and then clients and all that, but I just want to say thank you um, to God really. Um, Feel like every time I get on here, I cry. Um, <laughs> so, Thank you for sharing with us, Laura. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Father, I, Father, I just want to thank you right now. I want to thank you for being present. Yes. It, it, you are everything mm-hmm. and I just en- I'm enjoying this um, this pressure you know you talk about the hose I, I'm just enjoying um, 
this season, um, even in in the dark moments, um, in retrospect, um, it's all of it just brings me closer to you. So I just thank you. I thank you for putting these people in my life. Thank you. Um, thank you for making yourself known in all things that your present is here, presence is here, um, that your glory be known. Um, the fact that I'm even considering you when for months, there's many times that you weren't even a thought. So I just, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that I don't have to be in control. I love that that's an illusion um, and that's not from me. And the more that you make that known, the more the things in my life that are a lie um, come to light and truth reigns. So I just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That's yeah. great. Good. Yeah. That's Joe, Stephanie, you have anything? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone good? Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say that I heard Birdie say years ago that trust is the ability for your heart to go to rest in the integrity of someone else. Amen. Mm -hmm. And, and in this case, God. that has you know just resonated in my heart for a, yeah. since I heard it. Yeah. And, you know, and God told me, he's like, yeah, you can't really trust other human beings, <laughs> but you can trust me. Yeah. You know, and um, so, and John, I've had to wrestle with those same thoughts because, you know, I'm in the midst of loving my enemy right now. And this person, you know, we have we've known it but you know those things that you know you don't want to think people are that bad and you don't want to believe you want to believe the best about people and god is like no jesus made it pretty clear they'll hate you and you know you know he said you were a liar and your father is a liar you know um you can't trust people like that you know, even if you try to say that you do, you don't really. And, um, you know, we've been under a ton of pressure to cave from this person. You know, it's come to light. They are a master manipulator. Mm. And, you know, they've got so many people fooled. And, but also, they live in constant torment. That's it. And, you know, they are tormenting others because they are tormented, yet the world and religion has taught us, you know, we live in fear of those people because they do hold power. You know, they're not afraid to harm you physically or in the work that you do or something like that. And so, you know, like you all were saying, that work of the Holy Spirit to you know, kind of dismantle what we've always believed to rebuild us in his strength and his integrity to be able to stand because they need, we need it and they need it as much as we need it. You know, God's power, his love, his light to be manifest yeah. in us yeah. um, because we are not going to overcome them. We can't, we cannot overcome because we're not willing to go to the links they are. Mm. You know, we're not willing to destroy another person's life. They are like they are so controlled. And like you said, Deanne, the their arms crossed over their heart, you know, and they can't receive, like, you know, Beulah, I'd love nothing more than to love my enemy and to hug them. They won't let you hug them. Right. <laughs> and you know and it's scary this stuff that we're encountering is 
scarier than I've ever encountered. And I've encountered and encountered a lot of scary, you know, but like you say, God is, he's strengthening us all the more through the Holy spirit, you know, and hopefully these, these people will finally yield Mm -hmm. to that love, you know, that that light, I mean, that's my prayer has been, you know, I do pray for their salvation because I know it's going to help them and it's going to make so many other people's lives easier because they literally make people, the, the people that are around them, they make their life a living hell. It literally a living hell. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so please keep us in your prayers because there's all kinds of stuff going on. But at the same time, also a friend that rejected us and abandoned us years ago he came to us last week and said i just have to come to you guys and apologize you know you were my good friends and i i pushed you away i rejected you Mm. and he was like god was trying to talk to me Mm. he's like and in the moment i listened but after a while i was comfortable again and And he has now, he has lost his job. He lost his family. Mm. And it's like, whoa, the deception that people live under. Mm -hmm. And that's That's scary. I'm like, oh my gosh, because, you know, this, we were preaching the gospel to him, you know, before 2016. And he pushed us away in like 2017. But now he's come back and he's like, I've fully yielded my life to Christ. But he has literally lost everything. It took him losing everything. And it's just like, man, if you hear the voice of God, do not reject it. Say God, just say, God, I do not know how to trust you. I want to, but I don't know how, you know. (laughs) Like, I do not understand, but I want to understand that those are the best prayers to pray. (laughs) <laughs> you know because yeah. the holy spirit will yeah. do the work mm-hmm. we can't there's nothing we can do stephanie when you said beulah i would like to hug uh, my enemies but they won't let me uh immediately in my spirit i heard love never fails mm-hmm if you don't quit, <laughs> greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And then you give the testimony of the guy that rejected you and came back. So yeah. just, you know, just because they don't let you hug them, it ain't over. You keep right. the stance. You Amen. keep the stance that I love you. I love yeah. you. I love you. I love you. And guess what? The greater one is in us and love don't fail. It's going to win. Amen. Amen. So just Amen. 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 This has been good. It's been good. Real, real quick before we jump off in the chat, I posted a link to a video that uh, my beautiful bride Annette did a couple of years ago entitled Trust Belongs to God Alone. And if anybody's Ooh. not able to grab it out of the chat, uh, contact me uh, privately and I'll get the link to you. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, brother. No, did you have anything on your heart? Just sitting here and taking it all in, and I look down, mm-hmm. and this is what was on my notes after I'm sitting here scribbling. Strengthen our infrastructure, being steady and stable, trusting in God, taking us to new levels of trust and maturity. Uh, many different <laughs> rooms like Matt brought up and uh, honor the Holy Spirit. That's good. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Well, you want to close this out, Jimmy? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we are so mm-hmm. blessed today to have uh, such fresh anointing in our grasp. Lord, help us to continue to re- remember what's gone on here today, that we might be a bit partakers of your gift in us. Thank you, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise and honor. Bless everyone who's here in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Love you guys. Love you Love guys. You Bye. Bye. John, peace. <laughs> peace. <laughs> <laughs>
We say we say uh, uh, what is it? Love, peace, and chicken grease in the south. <laughs> You'd look good with long hair, Rick, as a hippie. I could just oh, see you it. Should have seen me. You should have seen me. I was right there with you, brother. <laughs> so cool. Love you.